Hello everyone, this is Mike with apptoto.com, and today we will be going through an overview and demo of the apptoto service. Once you have a calendar connected to apptoto, this is the screen that you'll see when you first log into the portal each and every time. You'll see all your upcoming appointments, you'll actually be able to see the status of those appointments, and you'll also be able to see all those participants tied to those appointments. So in order to send out the automated messages to clients, what AppToto needs is client contact information. So properly case first and last names, phone numbers, and or email addresses, however you do want to contact your clients. So if I were to open this new appointment here, you can see within the event body, I just have the client's properly case first and last name. I've also included his email address. That information will just get extracted, as you can see here, and we could also use that information in order to send out email messages to the clients if you choose to do so. So you're able to put this client contact information anywhere in the appointment. So as you can see in this test appointment, I have it in the title. That previous example I added in the event body. You could also scour the location and also the appointment guest list as well and find all those participants for those upcoming appointments. So I will go ahead and jump into the automated messages here. So when you first start out with AppToto, we start you off with one of each type of message. So an automated call, SMS, and email reminder, all set up to go out one day before the appointment. And this is for all appointments on your calendar. So if I were to turn all my auto messages on right now, every single one of those participants that I found in those appointments would start to receive these automated messages. If you do either wanna send differently worded messages to different appointment types that you do offer, or if you just want to target one certain appointment type that you do offer, you are able to set that up and I'll show you how we could do that here in just one moment. So with these preset messages, you could either turn them off, which I've already done here. You can actually edit them to better fit your needs or completely remove them from your account if you choose to do so. So I'll just first start out with this call reminder here. So we could take a look how that would look. So the call reminder by default would be read in a robotic mail and you could change it to female voice if you choose to do so. And it's just text-to-speech. So whatever message you have here within the, the body of that message would just read out to the client in that robotic voice. We also have another option. If you did want to record your own message and upload that as an MP3 file, you could record that and say something to the effect of, hi, this is a reminder of your appointment with. Then you could utilize these dynamic fields, this information within the brackets here, which will automatically populate for each appointment and each message you are sending out. So for instance, this event day time phrase field, we'll just look at that calendar event, that appointment, pull in the correct day and time of that appointment and update that accordingly. You could also have it update to who that appointment is with. If you do have multiple users for the account, um, we could update with each calendar owner name, which I'll show you here in just a few moments. So that's how the call is set up. If I click in the SMS message, it's set up very similarly um, where we do have those dynamic fields. We also have just plain text within there. So if I hit the preview button, this would show us what that message would read like to the client. If we were some, to send this out, this is just for a fake appointment. we will say appointment reminder tomorrow at 3 p.m. with demo user. Then we include this link within the message client could actually click on this link, add that appointment to their calendar. They could also confirm, cancel, or reschedule that appointment through that link as well. Uh, the client could also confirm, cancel, or reschedule by simply replying with one, two, or three to that message as well. Finally, with this email reminder, very similar uh, as far as having those fields within there. You could just put plain text within these messages as well. Um, so if I wanted to include any more information to the client, I could tell them where to park. And if I hit preview button, the preview button now, it'll just update with that plain English that I have included in the, the message as well. So I'll go ahead and click done and save this, and then open this SMS reminder here. So we actually offer three different types of messages that you could actually send out from AppToto. So we have the reminder messages, which you could send out before the appointment. We also have follow-up messages. If you wanted to follow up with your client after you met with them, either simply thanking them for coming in, reminding them to schedule our next appointment. And then we also offer what we call booking or initial messages. And you could time these to be sent out right when that appointment's put on the calendar. You could have this message going out to the client, confirming their appointment with you, and also including any more information about that appointment as well. 
So I'll go ahead and actually just stick to this reminder SMS message and go ahead and start showing you some customizations you could do as well. So you could change when that message is sent by changing this when field to from a day before to three days before, a week before, even an hour before the appointment. And you could also customize all the content within the body as well. So you don't have to utilize these preset fields we already have for you. You could change them to other fields. So say I didn't want to have the event day and time phrase, but I also wanted to include like the day of the week as far as Thursday, September 10th. If I click insert field here, this will show us all those available fields we do have within the system. So in this case, if I went to this event date, phrase, and time, I could actually pull in that specific field into the message and also include this more information for the client. I could also include other fields that we do offer. So if I wanted to personalize the message at all, include my client's first name who I'm meeting with, I could simply type out hi. And if I click insert field again, this will show me those available fields. So if I go to participant first name, for example, as long as that information is present in the appointment, we could also update that in the messaging as well. And I'll put some more plain text in there. If I hit preview now, this will show me what that updated message would read like. This is again for a fake appointment. It says, hi Fred, this is a reminder of your appointment, Thursday, December 10th at 3 p.m. with demo user. Reply one to confirm, two to cancel, or three to reschedule. So I'll go ahead and click done and save here. And as I was saying before, as I mentioned, if you did want to send either diff differently worded messages to different appointment types or pick and choose what appointment type is actually receiving messages from the account, instead of using this for all appointments section, we would want to utilize this rules section here that we have on the left. So if I click on new rule, it'll ask me to give a title for this. So I'll go ahead and call this consultation. Then we have these two drop downs that say if event includes, and then we have this click the change text box here. So remove that click the change. And it doesn't have to be if the event includes, it could be if the event title includes, if event location includes, it could also be does not include, starts with, ends with. There's a ton of different options within here to choose from. But for my purposes here, I'll just keep it as if the event includes this keyword of consultation. And then from here, I could actually specify what types of messages I wanna go out to those consultation appointments. So I could go ahead and add a reminder SMS to go out one day before. I could set up another one to go out, let's say an hour before. So you're able to set up multiple messages for a single appointment and you could use any combination of the messaging. So in this case, I'll go ahead and set up two SMS reminders and then I'll go ahead and set up a follow-up email as well to go out a day after the appointment to the client. So ahead, go ahead and turn these messages on so you can see how that will interact with my calendar and within the system. So after turning those messages on, this will actually bring me back to my main portal page, which had all those upcoming appointments on there. So you can see all that, that all these consultation appointments on the calendar now are in this bold font, as opposed to the normal font that some of these other appointments do have. That just indicates that we are scheduled to send out messages to these appointments. And you could actually see how many messages are scheduled to send by this bell icon here. So the majority of these have two, this one has three, this one just has three, because I actually have the email address for Margaret Smith for her consultation. So since this won't send out uh, for about a week or so, I'll go ahead and send this message out manually. And once I do send it, you'll actually see that that appointment status here updates to being reminded. And if I were actually to go back over to my Google Calendar, and this works for every like every other calendar system, we'll actually update the blurb, is what we call it, within the title field to being reminded. And then if I were to confirm this by replying with one on my phone, we'll actually update that to being confirmed here, as you can see, back within the system. It also updates to being green and with this check mark. Uh, so you can see this directly within the calendar and also within Aptoto. So Aptoto is designed to be a set it and forget it system where we could work with your current workflow, where you could work and manage your workflow out of your calendar as you normally do. And Aptoto will just work in the background, send out all those message templates to your clients and then update you whenever they have been reminded, confirmed, canceled or rescheduled those appointments with you. 
So now we'll jump into the settings here and to this notifications tab. So this is how we'll update you whenever clients have, as I said, been reminded, confirmed, canceled, or scheduled. So we could either up, we could update the calendar with all those statuses. We also have an abbreviations mechanism if you would just like to use like R for reminded, C for confirmed, etc. You can enable this and we would use that instead of using that full blurb of reminded or confirmed as well. Not only will we update the calendar, but we could also send you email notifications whenever the client confirms, cancels, reschedules, when they accept a booking, decline a booking, or if they just reply to any messages. So you could pick and choose what type of notifications you would like to receive. And then you could also specify who does receive those. So you could have the main user. So in this case, it would be this email address that I log in with or the calendar owner and calendar admin, which I'll show you where you could update that here in just a moment. Or you could just add any additional email that you would like here. So say I would like to receive those. I could just type simply type my email address within this text box here. And those email notifications could start going to this email address as well. So if you do want to update the calendar owner and calendar admin within Aptoto, you could just, within the same settings tab, you could just go to calendars and click on this gear icon. And this will show all these available fields we have within that the calendar settings there. So if you do have multiple users, I would highly recommend updating this owner name field. So basically whoever's calendar that appointment is on, we could update that in the messaging by simply using that username and company field. Or if you wanted to, you could update it to the owner name field as well. So I'll go ahead and update mine. I could also update my phone number if you wanted to include this in the messaging as well. And then here's where that owner email and admin email come into play here. So I'll go ahead and update those two fields. So now we could send it to my email address as well as our admin email address here at Aptoto, which is just the support at aptoto.com email address. So the next couple things I'll show you is how we'll reach out to your clients. So here's this caller ID tab. So when you first start out with Aptoto, we will send all those SMS and voice calls from an Aptoto number, which would start with a 925 area code and update for each appointment. We have two options if you would like to use other numbers. So you could actually reserve a number in your own area code. So if I would like to reserve one in mine, I could just simply type in my area code here, hit find number, and then select any of these options that we do have listed here. If I don't see one I like, I could just continue to hit this find number until I find one that I do like. What's great about this reserve number is the clients wouldn't actually see your cell phone number in this case. But if they did try to call this number for whatever reason, you could actually forward that call onto any number that you'd like to list within this text box, or you could send it to each individual calendar owner in this case as well. And we actually have a fairly new feature where we could actually host your US-based landline number within Aptoto. And to do that, you just click on this add your number feature. You could select it for voice calls or for texting. If I click it for texting, I would just have to enter that landline number within here and then begin this hosting process, which usually takes about 24 hours. And then once that's hosted within Aptoto, whenever you send out those SMS, and if you wanted to voice calls to clients, you could have your US-based landline number show up to the clients. Last thing I'll show you here is this email tab. So this works very much the similar way, same way as the caller IDs tab. By default, all those messages will be coming from an Aptoto email address. You could change that to have it come from a custom email address, and you could change the from email address here, also the from name. Another option would be, if you do have multiple calendars connected to Aptoto, you could have each calendar owner's email address show up as that from email address if you'd like. That brings us to the end of today's demo. If you have any further questions about the Aptoto service, you can reach our customer success team by email at supportedaptoto.com, by phone at 888-318-3765, or you could visit www.aptoto.com support for self-help.